This is the Cooler Master Master Frame 700. It is a very particular type of case. It is the type of case where somewhere somebody had the right idea. He wanted to do the right thing, but then he decided to give up and make every mistake he could have possibly made. But there are also good things about it. It's not all bad. The case does have the options and the capabilities to serve very specific purposes. So let's get to it. The Master Frame 700 is in some sort a dual purpose case. On one hand, it has the so called open air mode, where it's basically just a sophisticated version of a flat style showcase, like for example a Thermal Take P5. And then there is the test bench mode, which, yeah, it's, it's an open air test bench. Um, who, who would have thought? The unique part about this case comes from the two wings on each side. Those are attached using hinges whose friction is adjustable so that you can move them around easily or not so easily depending on what you want to do with the case. But don't believe you can just take this thing out of a box and then start building in it and, and start playing with the wings because you can't. The Master Frame 700 comes inside a surprisingly thin but heavy box or it's actually not that heavy it's not so heavy for an ATX case it's just unnaturally heavy for the size that the whole thing comes in they just crammed everything into very thin styrofoam sheets and then stacked a bunch of them on top of each other so that the end result is just unnaturally heavy once you got everything out you can start to do what i would best describe as adult lego on the building process of the case itself it's really not that bad once you get the hang of it it's relatively easy but i still believe that the manual isn't particularly good. They do explain a lot, but I would have loved to see things being grouped, like PSU installation, GPU installation, and, and so on, because they kind of tried to do the case assembly while explaining how to put stuff into it, which just got kind of confusing at times. And then for the test bench mode, they would just flat out assume that you have a finished open air case ready and then start to explain how to partially disassemble and change it which just doesn't make any sense. Sure, anybody with more than two working brain cells will figure out that you don't have to do that way. Uh, nobody is forcing you to, you know, drive through Brussels to get to Paris, but the manual could have explained this a bit differently. We won't go over a detailed how to assemble guide in this video, but we filmed the whole thing whilst we were doing the build that you can see right next to me. So if you want to see how much pain it was, uh, the video will be out in a week or two weeks after this one launches. But to spoil everybody, it's really not that hard. It's like 25 screws at max, and, and that's really it. Depending on the exact use case that you are going for, the case will look slightly different. Whilst the test bench mode uses the two feet as actual feet, with the side wings being adjustable to whatever you want to use them for, fans. You will use them either for fans or for radiators. I cannot see anybody who would actually use one of these to store some equipment on it. It would just fall off all the time, especially while it's moving. And for the open air mode, you move the wings to face the front of everything and use these two brackets to A, help the case to not fall over, but mainly to hold the gigantic piece of tempered glass side panel, or front panel actually which has a bit of a shadow too, which actually looks quite nice. But we will get to the numerous amounts of issue with that piece of glass later on. For both modes, you will get pretty much the same level of hardware compatibility. As far as motherboards are concerned, you can basically do whatever you want in here, from mini ITX all the way up to EATX. Just keep in mind that once you go beyond regular ATX, you will lose these two rails which can be used for water cooling equipment like pumps and reservoirs. And at this point, we already face the first issue with this thing, CPU cooler support. In test bench mode, you can go as high as you want, which does make sense, there is nothing like above the case, so you know, do whatever you want to do. But if you do choose to go the regular route, with glass installed, you will be limited to 158mm high coolers, which is not a lot. But nobody forces you to use the glass, just don't, like I don't, 
and the problem is resolved. On to the next issue, GPU support. Now, for the length, there isn't really any issue. Cooler Master does say you should be aiming for 310 millimeters for maximum compatibility, whatever the hell that means. By that, they mean the water cooling rails. However, if you don't need all of them, something like 380 is perfectly fine for every mode. Like for example, our 4090 over here, which fits perfectly in here. Or you can just open up the right wing and be ready for the next 8090. For the card death, however, it's a very different story. Given how massive these cards are today, you are going to have a really hard time with that glass. Though you can use like a 90 degree adapter that would solve the issue, but still, be prepared for some squishing or just don't use the glass at all because it just creates one problem after the other. For the PSU, we got three different positions. After installing the bracket onto a regular ATX PSU, we can slide it in between the main plate and the hard drive bracket and then screw it onto the main plate. Or do the exact same thing right below it. For the third position, mount it straight onto the back side of one of the wings. And for the length, given how the PSUs would be located, the sky is really the limit. Nobody is forcing you to just use one, you have two brackets. You can do dual PSU systems without any trouble, though it doesn't make a lot of sense nowadays. The I.O. is pretty cool though. We got this little bracket which has an USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A and a combined audio in and out jack and of course the very clicky Cooler Master Master Clicker Master Button button. And we can mount this thing onto the back side of the main plate with the I.O. facing away from the case either in the top or the bottom, depending on your particular use case. For the hard drives and SSDs, we got quite a lot in here. We can use the four rails on the back panel to mount four 3.5 inch drives or 2.5 inch drives if you are ready to mount them by only using two screws. Then we also got another three 2.5 inch spots by using this bracket that mounts onto the side of the main plate. And in case you got lost for a few hours, like we did, yes, it's meant to install the SSDs slightly tilted. Now let's get to the fans. Obviously, we are meant to use the two wings to mount the fans onto them. And by spec, we can either mount three 120s or two 140s. And for radiators, it's the same thing, either an up to 360 or 280. So that's already something. But we also got two of these 90 degree adapters. These can be mounted onto an up to 420 rad and then you can mount the whole thing onto the top of the main plate, either with the rad standing on the bracket or hanging down from it. But Cooler Master does say that this is only possible in test bench mode. Now I'll be honest, if you choose not to use the glass and therefore the bracket which would be here wouldn't be here, you could also do it whilst the case is standing up straight. However, don't. If the case is lying flat, the rad can either just rest on the bracket or it will be hanging from it and if it is standing like this you would have the whole radiator which is just pulling on it and, and they, they don't want to do that. Okay, now with the compatibility section out of the way, let's go to the me nagging part and that's going to be a lot of nagging today. Let's start with the wings. 50% of the time they are just useless. Sure, if you have the case in test bench mode, you can mount a fan to them and adjust them so that it is pushing air onto, let's say, the VRMs. Okay, makes sense, some sense. It it is not for nothing. But it is a test bench. Why is there all of this design stuff on there? It's basically obstructing half the fan. Why would you do that? If it's a test bench, then just Make it a test bench, quit obstructing it with anything that remotely resembles design and make it a big ass hole. But okay, there still is the open air mode and there it does make a bit of sense. On one hand you got the radiator support which is on there, which does make a lot of sense and you just get the air to move a bit around, which also sure, used with the red on the left side is fine, but then the fans on here are becoming utterly useless. But you could be going for a custom dual red type of loop. With the two wings, it would make a lot of sense. You have a red and fan there, a red and fan here, which is amazing. But the left one is always obstructing basically everything. 
from motherboard IO to GPU, good luck getting anything in there. And if you don't happen to use the glass, I can confirm good luck plugging in an USB without jamming your knuckles into the fan. I dare you to try. It's, it's just not very enjoyable. Sure, you could always argue that you have the front I.O. and once the system is running, you don't need to access the back ones all the freaking time, but I can guarantee you there are more than enough people that go through those every goddamn day. And for those, this is going to be a huge hassle. But now let's get to the point that infuriated me during the build that you can see here. This is supposed to be a test bench, an open one, so zero obstructions. You can just slap stuff on there, benchmark, then take it off, next one, and so on and so on. Except when your benchmarks are about CPU coolers. For some reason, Cooler Master thought it was a good idea to make the back hole partially obstruct the mounting holes of a cooler on Intel boards. Why would you do this to people? So in case you are installing cooler after cooler after cooler, each time you will have to at least loosen up three individual motherboard screws, the three ones in the top, just to squish in that bracket. Why? This alone makes this thing utterly useless for CPU cooler benchmarks. Just, just useless. And the joke is, it would have been easily solvable. Just make the hole bigger. Cable management as a whole is just an issue on here. Sure, you got some straps in the back which do work, but it's an open frame design. Of course, cable management will only consist of you strapping cables to whatever you can find. You will still see them no matter what you do but uh, they tried their best. But there is also a logical issue with this. How exactly have they thought we would be moving the fan cables to the main board without them dangling here? How? Th there is just no possibility to hide anything except if you hide it around the hinge and I really doubt that you want to do that. And now let's get to a feature that Cooler Master killed before even the first case was shipped out. Just like most other open panel straight type of cases, it comes with visa mounting holes in the back. You know, the same type of standard that you use to mount monitors and TVs to the wall. The problem is that given that you have these outstanding wings, you have a lot of weight far away from the wall or where the wall would be, so there is a lot more pulling happening than if you would just have like a straight plate. For this reason, Cooler Master highly recommends to only wall mount this thing if the full system is 14 kilograms or below. Now the issue I have with this is that the net weight, so the case itself, already comes in at 12.1 kilograms. And to make things a bit weird, I haven't checked it, but I'm pretty sure that this number is without the glass. No way that the carton box and a few styrofoam pieces make up for that three kilogram difference between net and gross. But let's give it the benefit of the doubt and go with that 12. My 4090 is almost two. So just the case and a 4090 and you are out of spec. But okay, let's say you go for something more normal, a 4070 Ti, and let's say that one weighs only one kilogram. You then still have one kilogram left before Cooler Master calls it unsafe. Where is motherboard, fans, PSU, and the cooler? What does a filled up 3060 Red actually weigh? I, I don't know, but I do know that by Cooler Master's own highly recommended limitation, visa mounting is just not possible at all. And to give you some sort of an orientation, this thing here puts a total of 17 point something kilograms on the scale. It's no visa mounting at all if you listen to Cooler Master. Now, to cut Cooler Master some slack here, this is just insurance talk, and if you get a decent visa mounting system and, and you don't mount it to the wall with hopes and dreams, it will work fine. The main panel, or every panel, is thick AF, and as long as the mounting portions of whatever mounting system you're using isn't made out of the paper, it will hold 
perfectly fine. I just don't like it when companies are already creating loopholes before selling the product. But as we already briefly mentioned it, let's talk about the quality because if there is one thing Cooler Master did right with this, then it is the quality because oh my god, this thing is absolutely indestructible. The complete front of the case is made out of three millimeter thick black steel and I love it. It's it's, I'm trying to bend it, but it doesn't want to flex. The only thinner part would be the back plate where you mount the PSU to, and that's 2mm, so that's still very, very thick. But in the front is just one gigantic piece of steel, and it is robust beyond expectations. And even the, even the hinges are great. Initially, I believe that they may either be too weak to make them move but at all, or just too hard to make sure that it doesn't fall apart. But, but no, they feel incredibly high quality, they are still movable, and by adjusting their tensity, you can completely lock them in, or you can make them a bit loosey, and then you can move everything with a very good feeling to it. But also the feet are quite cool. To give you the option, Cooler Master includes eight of these little rubber feet that you can mount to either the bottom side in a test bench mode or to the wings and to the main panel in open air mode. And I believe this is a perfectly fine solution. But now back to me nagging. Overall, I think they had a great idea, but the implementation is just... Everything went wrong. It's Everything about this case is like, you can do this, but then you get issues with that. It's, you can use it in test bench mode, but then you get issues with quickly removing the, the backplate of coolers. You can use it as a showcase, but then you can't really reach the rear I.O. You can create beautiful dual red custom setups, but then why are the wings swivable in the first place? Just imagine having like a, a hardline custom build in here and then somebody comes and is like, wow, wow, are these movable? <clears throat> bye bye system. And until now, I haven't even mentioned the front glass, which either creates an issue for big ass 2023 GPUs or severely limits the CPU cooler height. Not even talking about it doing literally nothing. It's, it's not like it will protect anything at all from any sort of dust. At best, it's a please do not touch my components thing. Nothing more. For me personally, the showcase side of the system is a viable use case. Beautiful dual red systems are possible, but the drawbacks of not reaching the I.O. is quite severe. And the test bench is just heavily, and I mean heavily restricted because of that small ass hole in the back. It, it really should have been bigger. If that hole would have been big enough, it would have been a perfectly fine test bench. A heavy AF test bench, but a perfectly fine test bench nonetheless. So as far as I can tell, there is only a single use case for this that is not coming with an army of restrictions a GPU specific test bench. That's the only component that you can swap in and out without creating any other issue. And that's kind of really it. Everything else will be an issue or will create an issue that will annoy you at some point sooner or later. And it could have been prevented quite easily. Just rotate the motherboard by 90 degree, leave some space in the bottom for the cables and make the hole behind it big enough. That would have made so much more sense. Just imagine for standing operation, you got the cables coming out at the bottom, and if you leave a bit of space below the motherboard, you can mount everything easily while not bending anything, both CPU and GPU. The whole wing and I.O. issue is just gone, and the right wing has a real purpose because it is blasting air into the GPU. And for test bench mode, with the bigger hole, every issue is resolved, not even mentioning that by rotating the motherboard, the air would be blasted straight onto the VRMs instead of fighting against the I.O. All the issues easily solvable. Let's just hope that at some point there will be a V2. On a side note, I just quickly wanted to mention how big this thing actually is. The glass is 65 by 40 centimeters and the main panel is about 50 wide and 42 high, while the side wings are both about 20 in, in length or depth, or depending on how you look at it. But because you can change the, the angle of both of them, it doesn't really 
make a lot of sense to give you some size because you can make it bigger or smaller. So um, just keep in mind that the absolute maximum you can, you can uh, adjust here is like a meter or sl slim behind that, like 95, something like that. Um, so you have an idea. Now on to craptastic product descriptions. This time featuring, you don't have to say anything to make a bad impression. I'm not going to read anything today. If you have ever read anything coming from Cooler Master, you know how much they love to sprinkle fairy dust onto everything. Highly customizable, specifically designed direction hinges, panoramic tempered glass screen, it, it just never stops. No, my issue is they present something that is not part of the case. During the build of this rig, I realized that there is no vertical option for the GPU, although the product page is completely filled with vertical builds. And you can do vertical builds, but that's an option, and that has to be paid for. Uncool. I believe that I would get a vertical capable case here, not a buyable option. And they did not mention anywhere on the whole page that this is the case. So where does this leave us? Overall, quality-wise, it's really freaking good. I will not deny that. They did an excellent job with build quality. But as for the actual usefulness of this, for a showcase, sure, once you build it and you have it on the table or on the wall, why not? It's definitely an eye-catcher, but the I.O. will create problems on the back one, so keep that in mind. For a test bench, GPU definitely yes, but not for coolers. The hassle of remounting the motherboard all the time is just way too big. It's not a bad case, but I think it was a very good idea on paper, and now where they actually implemented it, it's just not so easy to use on a daily basis. But okay, this should be it for Cooler Master and their Master Frame 700. At this point, a huge thank you to them for providing it to us. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your store for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to not buy STS.com, because the Azerbaijani oil company that had it before seems to be gone now, and they want a whopping $729,999 for the domain, which I am definitely not ready to pay, or able. Anyway, thank you for watching, but if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Modcase 3D. Hope to see you in the next one, and bye bye.